Hello children. Good morning everybody. How are you? Hope you are fine. I'm Fozia. I'm going to handle English for 7th standard. I think this year we will experience a different style of learning. I'm sure this is quite interesting for you. So children, please listen and enjoy our class. In our English textbook, the first unit is entitled as Nature's Plenty. Here we go with the story, How Far is the River? Do you know who is the author of this story? Yes, Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is an Indian writer who writes in English. He has written novels and poems. He is known mostly for his contributions to children's literature. He was awarded with Sahitya Academy Award, Padma Bhushan Award and Padma Sri Awards also. There are so many short stories in his collections. Here is a video. you can watch in this video? Yes, it is about nature. Nature is a lovely and attractive place. We love it. Do you enjoy watching nature? Yes, of course, all of you like to watch and we can feel how beautiful is nature. Now let's come to our story. Do you like stories? Yes, of course, I know you all of you like stories. Here is a story about a 12 year old boy who sat out on a tree to appreciate the beauty of nature. Do you want to know where does he go? In last class, all of you went for a trip. Okay, let's find it. The boy lives in his house near the hill close to the mountain. Beyond the mountain, there is a river. This boy had heard a deal about the river. He longed to see the river. You know, he had a dream. He wants to touch the river and know it personally. One day, he stood in the veranda of his house. He looks across the valley with the dream burning in his heart and he thinks how wonderful it would be. One day, I will find out where the river is. He wished that if he could touch the water. The boy was 12 years old. He looks well, is sturdy with untidy black hair and shining black eyes. He had fine features and a clear brown skin. That day it so happens that the boy's parents had left him alone. They had gone out to visit relatives. The boy was alone at home. Suddenly, an idea strikes the boy. He tells himself, Why don't I go out and explore the beauty of nature? I will go out alone and before my parents return, I will be back. I will discover the river and I will return. My parents will not even know I have left the house. With this plan, now he made some arrangements. Let's see. Did the boy go? Let's read the story. Are you ready to read the story? 
Yes, so all of you please take your textbook and listen to me. How far is the river? Between the boy and the river stood a mountain. The boy was young and the river was small, but the mountain was big. The thickly forested mountain hid the river, but the boy knew it was there. He had never seen the river with his own eyes, but from the villagers he had heard of it, of the fish in its water and of its rocks. He wished to touch the water and know it personally. He stood in front of his house on the hill opposite the mountain and gazed across the valley dreaming of the river. He was about 12 years old, a sturdy boy with untidy black hair and shining black eyes. He had fine features and a clear brown skin, but his hands and feet were rough and scratched. He was barefooted, not because he couldn't afford shoes, but because he liked the feel of warm stone and cool grass. It was 11 o'clock and he knew his parents wouldn't return home till evening. There was a loaf of bread he could take with him, and on the way he might find some fruits. Here was the opportunity he had waited for. His mother and father had gone to visit relatives for the entire day and had left him on his own. If he came home before dark, before they returned, they wouldn't know where he had been. He went into the house and wrapped the loaf in a newspaper. Then he closed all the doors and windows. The path to the river dropped steeply into the valley then rose and went round the big mountain. It was frequently used by the villagers, the woodcutters, milkmen and mule drivers, but there were no villages beyond the mountain or near the river. The boy passed a woodcutter and asked him how far it was to the river. The woodcutter was a short but powerful man with a creased and weathered face and muscles that stood out in hard, ugly dumps. Seven miles, he said, which was fairly accurate. Why do you want to know? I'm going to the river, said the boy. Alone? Of course, but it is too far. It will take you three hours to reach there, and then you have to come back. It will be getting dark. Besides, it is not an easy road. But I am a good walker, said the boy, though he had never walked further than the mile from his house to his school. The path was steep and the boy had to run most of the time. It was a dizzy, winding path and he slipped once or twice. The hill was covered with lush green ferns. The trees were wound in creepers and a great wild dahlia suddenly reared its golden head from the leaves and ferns. Okay students, now we can discuss some unfamiliar words from this part. So please listen. Set out, leave a place and begin a journey. Thickly forested, covered with large quantities of trees. Gazed, looked long and steadily. Sturdy, strong, fit and healthy, untidy, not neat or properly arranged, barefooted, without any footwear, afford to have enough money, a loaf of bread, a slice of bread, wrapped, covered completely, dizzy, unable to balance. So please take your notebook and please write this word in it. Okay? Now, you want to read this story at least five times. Okay? Then keep watching and have a nice day. Thank you.